Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what happens when you put ferrofluid in a rapidly changing magnetic field. So there's two different ways that you can change the magnetic field. You can either change it with a wave that moves past it or a wave that continually grows and then dies back down. First, I'm going to be trying a traveling wave. An easy way to do this is just to put magnets on some rotating device. So what I've done here is just stick two neodymium magnets on the end of my drill like this. First, we're gonna try it with the two poles facing the same direction. So these are both north facing magnetic poles. And then first I'll be trying the ferrofluid in a liquid solution so you can actually see it a little bit better. And then I'll be trying it outside of the liquid. In order to do this, all you need is some brine solution. So the brine solution is just made by mixing regular table salt with water. It's best to use kosher salt. It mixes in better and doesn't have these anti-caking agents in it. Then you just put the ferrofluid in. Let's see if this works. The reason these spikes are forming on the ferrofluid is due to something called normal field instability. It means that anything ferromagnetic that you put in the magnetic field actually wants to align with the magnetic field lines. So it doesn't want to lay flat on the magnet, but it wants to be pushed up straightward following the magnetic field lines away from it. Okay, let's spin our drill and see what happens. So it's pretty cool what happens here. At low speeds, the ferrofluid can stay on just fine, but it starts to get dragged through the water. But then at higher speeds, the centrifugal force starts to pull out the ferrofluid away from the rotating magnets. But once you get spinning fast enough, the ferrofluid that got flung off before then gets picked up by the other magnet coming around because you're spinning it so fast. And then when you spin it really fast, it's almost like there isn't two magnets anymore. It's like it's just one magnet below it. Okay, the next thing I have is a bunch of neodymium magnets alternating magnetic fields. So it goes north, south, north, south, all the way around it. And I can spin this really fast. This is how I was able to make kind of a mock induction cooktop. If you put some metal over this while it's spinning, it actually heats up that metal due to the eddy currents that form in it. You can even boil water on top of a coin, for example. But what I'm going to be doing here is placing ferrofluid on top of this and then spinning it and seeing what the waves look like on top of it. Okay, so I just stick this under here and then put my ferrofluid on top of it. So I can spin this plate below it. Let's see what happens when I spin it really fast now. The spikes in the ferrofluid start rotating faster and faster, but the fluid isn't actually moving. Let's look at this in a thousand frames per second and watch what happens when we speed up the magnets below it. There is a little bit of flow that starts happening around in a circle, but hardly any at all. So when you start out slow, the liquid is really turbulent. But the faster you spin it, the more smooth it becomes. It kind of averages out all those spikes that are moving around in a circle. You can see when I stick my finger in it that it's not flowing around my finger, so the liquid's barely moving. But the waves going through it are moving extremely fast. Now let's see what happens to the ferrofluid when we don't use a traveling changing magnetic field like this, but we actually use AC current to make an electromagnet. Okay, so for my AC electromagnet, what I have here is just a coil of wire, and I have this just to measure the current going through it, connected to my variac here. So I can turn up the variac, See, it's going, it has one amp going through it now. I just set my ferrofluid on top of here. Now let's see what it looks like. And I turn it up. So it's pretty stable bumps right there. So with the AC magnet, we were actually able to get stable spikes. So even though the magnetic field is changing from north to south, north to south, it doesn't change how the spikes are behaving on top because either way, the spikes are gonna be there. It doesn't matter whether it's north or south. And so they'll always be present. 
So it's pretty cool to see the behavior of ferrofluid in changing magnetic fields. And whenever I use ferrofluid, it always ends up looking like a crime scene after. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you next time.